by Gary Gold at DAS. You know, many times throughout the week we get phone calls from our customers about the millimeter and the display with respect to the temperature readout. As you can see here, and I have a millimeter out of the case right now, but as you can see here, we have a bunch of dashes. Well, the thermocouple is here. This is what generates the temperature down here. This is the EMF reading right there. Now, this is a thermocouple. Thermocouple consists of two dissimilar metals. In the case of this millimeter thermocouple, this is a type K, which is chromel and alumel. At the top, you have a little junction, a little bead. When those two dissimilar metals are combined together, it creates a very minute EMF signal. It goes through some a junction in the bottom of the plate here. We do a, a reference junction for the ambient room temperature. But besides that, what I want to point out is this looks perfectly fine, but we're not getting a reading down here. Well, what this means is that over time, someone or something has disturbed the integrity of the wires that are inside that blue jacket. There are two wires inside that blue jacket. Both are insulated. Now, friction can cause the metals to break down, but so can't time. A typical thermocouple does degrade over a period of time. Two years, you may be lucky if you get three years out of it, but it does happen. And when this does display on the LCD, that means it's time to replace this. So right now I have this little jury rig, but I'm going to pop that out. You can see the cover. Everything is just temporary right now for the demo. Now I'm going to plug in a new one. You can't tell the difference by looking at it, but you can certainly tell the difference when it's plugged in. So now here we see it's 70.6 degrees. There are a couple things you can do with the bad one. The yellow part is still good. If you want to buy some K thermocouple wire, let me put this down. If you want to disassemble this block, you can disassemble it by removing this black screw and you'll find two more screws under the block and all you have to do is get a K type of thermocouple wire and attach it the same way inside the plus and minus wires. It's just two terminals and that can restore your old thermocouple uh, to good working order. So I wanted to point that out to you folks so that you understand that. And if you do need a new one, we sell these as is for about $8, and I, I think that that includes the shipping. I'm not exactly sure, but um, we just send those off in the mail to people. Okay. So the other thing I want to do while we have this apart, I'm going to just remove this, remove this cap. I want to point out a couple of things. First thing that you're going to notice is the shielding around the chassis. It wraps, it envelops the entire chassis. This protects it from cell phones and other things that might interfere with the circuitry. But the other cool thing I want to point out, I always tell people to turn off the thermocouple when you're doing your physical measurements in the field. And that can be done by simply holding the range fast button, disengaging the thermocouple. You see the dashes are gone. And then what you can do is we're now in the fast mode, and I want to kind of demonstrate just how quick the fast mode is. I'm going to take a simple pocket watch, digital watch. It's got a little watch battery in it. It's got a little second hand on it. It's a very inexpensive Casio watch, but I love it. And what it does is it draws microamps of current. But I want to show you just how sensitive the device is for detecting EMF from the insides of the watch. You can see it pulsating. That's for every second that goes by on the dial. The little mechanisms, the little gears, the microamps of current that are being drained inside that watch are all detected. That's how sensitive the device is when you disengage the temperature sensor. Now, it's jumping around. You can't really make heads or tails of what's happening on that display. But there is a cool thing that you need to remember. If you turn on the record function, REC, it's still moving very, very quickly. But now I have the ability of seeing what the reading was. So if I click that, it tells me that it reached a maximum of 5.7 milligauss. Also, if the temperature was on, I'd be able to see the temperature max. And you see it clicks over to minimum by clicking that button to minimum. Now, on the bottom left, you have an escape button. If I press that escape button, 
I'm back to live readings again. And any minimum or maximum value that occurs will be retained. Okay. Now, if you want to get out of this session where I'm capturing and recording the min and max value, simply hold the record button and turn it off and you're back to live. And if you want to turn it back on again, start all over again, there you go. Max 5.9. Very repeatable. So there you have it. I just wanted to point out a couple of features. Number one, the thermocouple. Number two, it's important to see the integrity of the millimeter. On the back side is our coil. It's an actual winding. It's not an antenna. Underneath here, you have all surface mount. A little bit of stuff that you normally wouldn't see. And I'm going to escape. Back to reading each individual second inside that watch. That's it for now. Enjoy the rest of your day.